Welcome to our tutorial about Surface Styles in Inventor Studio. Let's go to the Inventor Studio environment, Applications, Inventor Studio. To return to the design environment, simply select Applications and select Part or Assembly if you were working in the Assembly environment. In this tutorial and our two subsequent chapters, we'll be looking at Inventor Studio's Surface Styles, Lighting Styles, and Scene Styles. Each of these styles has a different purpose and contributes uniquely to the final image you produce. All right, let's begin by covering surface styles. Surface styles are the means by which you create color and texture for your components. Inventor Studio comes with many preset styles. These are divided into different categories. These categories are displayed in the left-hand panel here. Let's begin by creating a new surface style. Under Category, I'm going to type PP. This stands for polypropylene. Now, let's choose from the left column. A Save dialog window appears. Click Yes to save the changes. And let's scroll up this panel. We're going to right click and rename. Let's call our style PP Red. Click OK to save. Now let's adjust the color. We'll start with Ambient. Select Red. Now let's select a diffuse color. We'll choose a dark red. OK. The color in the preview window changes accordingly. The ambient color is the color that the object reflects in an indirect or an uneven lighting environment. The diffuse choice is the color that the object will reflect in direct sunlight or other direct light sources. If you want to match the ambient and diffuse colors, you would click this arrow on the right. The specular choice. This sets the color that the object reflects from external light sources. OK. If we match the specular color to the diffuse color, we can reduce the object's shininess, as you see in our preview on the left. You can control the reflective intensity by setting the shininess property on the Reflection tab. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's take a look at the Emissive section. Emissive is the color emitted by the object if it contains a light source. This color doesn't interact with the lighting style. OK, let's change the diffuse choice to red, since after all, we've named our new style polypropylene red. Now we're ready to go to the Reflections tab. The first parameter, shininess, specifies the amount of surface and light that'll reflect off the surfaces. For surfaces with a matte finish or a lower reflection, the value will be less than 50. If you're looking for a surface with a higher reflection level, such as paint, polished metal, and so on, the value is going to be above 50 on this scale. For example, chrome has a shininess level of about 90. We're going to leave it low at 20. We can also define the reflection map. By default, Inventor uses a CAR3 bitmap. This image is located in the Textures folder on an XP operating system. On a Vista system, the location may be different. If you do want to make global changes to the reflection map, you can simply overwrite this image with your own image. Let's cancel out of this dialog window for now. Next, let's take a look at the Opacity tab. Opacity defines the amount of light passing through the part or its level of transparency. The Refraction slider below manages the degree to which light's direction changes when it passes through the object. We've also got five presets to choose from here, air, water, glass, crystal, and diamond, each with an increasing level of refraction. If your object is not transparent, this setting will not be relative to your style. Let's look at the next tab, the Diffuse Map. The options here give your surface an appearance without bumpiness. When you specify the Diffuse Map, the directory where the map resides should be included in the project libraries. If not, you'll get a warning message. Inventor comes with a number of different surface maps. You can also create your own image. 
Here we can adjust the scale. We can also change the map direction. Let's uncheck this for now. The last tab is the bump map. One more thing on the diffuse map I wanted to cover. The color you end up with will be the original color of the part combined with the color of the diffuse map. Okay, now let's go to the bump map tab. This tab is similar to the diffuse map, but it creates an uneven surface. Let's check out diamond plate 1. We can adjust the scale and direction, open. Amount controls how deep the bump is, and it can go inward or outward. The color of the bump map image doesn't affect the color of your part, but the higher the contrast of the image, in other words, the more black and white the image is and less gray, the more pronounced the appearance of the bumpiness will be. The same as texture option is grayed out right now. I want to check out how this works. Let's go back to the diffuse map. Let's use a texture image we check here. Okay, we're going to select Plastic 3 and click Open. To make the effect of the bumpiness more dramatic, let's increase the scale to about 500. Now let's go back to the Bump Map. We'll check Same as Texture. As you see, the surface image in our preview has become more realistic. Okay, let's uncheck the Same as Texture option and uncheck Use Texture Image. Now let's click Save and Done. We're going to apply the surface style we created to our part. On the right is a drop down menu of surface styles. Let's scroll down for our surface style, PP Red. And here's how our part looks with our new surface style. Let's go back and make some modifications to PP Red. This time we're going to use a texture image. Check this option on the Diffuse Map tab. Let's use Plastic 3, click Open, go to the Bump Map tab, check Same as Texture. Let's increase the scale quite a bit. Save. This setting is too high, but let's click Done so we can see how it looks on our part. Let's return to Surface Styles, Diffuse Map. We'll restore the slider setting to 100%. Save. And Done to close the Surface Styles dialog window. As you can see, this setting looks much better. This concludes our tutorial about surface styles.